Hello everyone, today we've got a full face of first impressions from the PR haul. If I look a little bit different, it's because I've got no fake tan on and I just dyed my hair blonder. We cleaned it out and went super blonde for summer. I feel like the old me, <laughs> like from years ago. I just did a half head and I was about to fake tan, but I just wanted to ask you guys opinion. Do you think I can pull off the pale skin and super blonde hair? Because there's something about like when I've got really blonde hair, I feel like I have to put on makeup and tan. Like I feel like it, I don't know if it's like, I think it washes me out or if, I can't tell. Basically like, does this look okay? So I feel like when I've got the darker, like more natural roots and everything and I wear no makeup, like it just looks really pretty. Like, I don't know, am I just not used to it? Is this the vibe where I need makeup? Also, I feel like this is the worst time to do this, but I've also like started just putting on some clothes and jewelry that I never wear. So like everything's different and it's a bit too much for me, but I decided to go with silver jewelry today. So we've got silver earrings, silver necklace, and then like gray as well. Cause I thought we'd try out some of those grunge palettes due to your guys' requests. And at the PR hauls, you guys wanted to see how I would use like the grungy palettes, like the Natasha Denona or the Huda Beauty ones. So yeah, I thought like to go with that grungy look would do like some silver jewelry. And it's all a bit much for me right now. Like it's just a whole lot of different. Anyways, I'm gonna fake tan. I've been meaning to for days now and I just have been I got sick. I got a stomach bug. So that was fun. Just haven't really been bothered to fake tan. So yeah, anyways, that's the plan for today. I'm gonna chuck on some fake tan and do my makeup. So I hope you guys enjoy watching this. And I've got a whole list of your guys' requests from my PR haul too, like a checklist for filming over the next few weeks. So if you've been requesting a certain thing, chances are I've seen it, but maybe just comment it again just in case. Thank goodness I thought I'd run out. I was panicking. Like, I have other fake tans I like, but I used one of them the other day, and I had like the, um, well not the other day, it was like a couple weeks ago. I had like the skin that looks like bread afterwards. This is just my all-time favorite. There's a reason I go through the stuff, like water. Not actually, but you know. This is my own brand. We took ages to develop this. It's vegan. It's the self-tanning foam. It's the most beautiful color. Put some on, try not to flash anyone. Like, sorry? Look at that color. Hold on. I'll blend this out off camera because I'm so scared of slipping a tip. I'm feeling so much better already. <laughs> Skip forward if you don't care about tan, but let me tell you a couple things about it. This is one of the most hydrating formulas I've ever used in a fake tan before because I hate, like when I fake tan, I just feel like my skin gets so dried out and it just looks terrible. It looks old, it looks dull, it's just not a vibe. So I knew I wanted something very hydrating and we tried even more hydrating formulas than this, but this was the most hydration we could get into like a fake tan without the product when you pump it out like this, without it literally just dissolving into water. And here we've got vitamin B5, vitamin E, aloe vera, jojoba, rose hip, um, avocado and mamaku. So hydrating. It smells good. It smells like mango-y, fruity, and it just glides on so easy. Oh, here's a before and after. I kind of forgot to do that. And it just makes your skin glow. I find it wears off really well compared to other tans. It's so much easier for me to remove, and when I do scrub it off, it actually scrubs off. I'm not like you know, making my skin go bright red and raw to get the whole thing off. I'd say the only like bad feedback we've had from it, from like, you know, my peers, like when I've sent it out for PR or like people leaving reviews, is that it's too dark. And that's fine, because that's like a subjective complaint. For me, it's perfect. But if you are more of like a natural light tan person, then it might be too dark for you. But if you like a tan, like if you've always liked my recommendations from the past for the tans I've used in the past, the colors I've used, dark tans, ultra darks, colors like that, then you'd like it. And the price point, we made it really affordable. It's such a good price point. When I do my hands, I just kind of cover them like that. And then I flip my mitt to the side I haven't been pumping tan onto, so it's like a little bit drier and I massage it in. I also love this tan because I can apply it straight to my face and it does not break me out ever. It develops quickly, but I like to just wear it all day and shower it off at night or you know, wear it overnight. The back right now is just none of my business until Hamish gets home. And I just use whatever's left over my face. The top two ingredients are water and aloe vera juice. Like, it's just luxe. Anyway, I'm gonna stop bleating on about it now. I just thought I'd share it with you guys once again in case any of you haven't tried it with summer coming up and everything. And if you wanna try small businesses fake tan, switch up from whatever you're using and just give something new a go if you feel like it, thank you. And I've got a discount code below. I think it's Shanexo. 
Is it just Shenixo or Shenixo Twin? I don't even know. I should know. I've got too many codes all over the show, so I forget. All right, onto the makeup. Instead of primer, I don't know. I thought I'd try this. Well, I'm trying like a four in one next. So we're gonna go in with some SPF. This is Dermalogica Pore Screen SPF 40. Blurring with a hint of tint and it's a mineral sunscreen. So pop some of this on. Oh, it goes on clear. Does it transform or something? This is a hint of tint. I don't see a tint. Maybe it's supposed to adjust to your skin tone slightly. I mean, it says a hint of tint, so I'm not too hung up about it. Obviously, it's not meant to be like tinted. Otherwise, they call it tinted. It's a hint of tint. I feel like it's just like a little marketing thing. What I care about is how it feels on my skin and if my makeup applies nicely on top of it. I feel like that did even out my skin tone a little bit though. Maybe. Making sure to apply a decent amount. So I've done a pump on each cheek. <laughs> Is that too much? I don't know. I just would rather not have, you know, not enough. And it feels so good. It feels so moisturizing. Doesn't have a sunscreen smell, which I actually like a sunscreen smell, but I know lots of you don't. So if you're one of those people, it doesn't smell like typical sunscreen. It's not pilling. It's not doing anything weird as I'm rubbing it in. I really like how it looks and it feels very, very lightweight. It's got a little bit of tack to it. It feels a little bit greasy when you're putting it on, but not greasy. I'd say like moisturizing. Greasy. However, yeah, it sinks in really, really well. It doesn't feel like I've got lots of stuff on my skin. So first impression, so far so good. I'll definitely use this over summer. I'm trying to get used to like putting on SPF. I like to put it like down my neck and chest as well normally, but just because I've just applied this fake tan, I'm not going to do it right now. But um, I've been making sure to try and make an effort to do that. Oh, I see a peacock outside my fence. I've been trying to do that since I'm spending a lot more time outside in the garden lately. So I thought I'd try this for foundation. I was tempted to use my little like color case things from Mitchell, but I'm actually going to do a whole video all about them as one of my next uploads because I just want to do like a full face. Today I thought I would try one of these, the Maybelline Perfecta 4-in-1. So it's primer, powder, concealer, and BB cream all in one apparently. However, I am going to do a different concealer. I don't know. I'm kind of nervous. I don't know why because the last Maybelline product I used I was obsessed with. Still am obsessed with. It's in my makeup bag upstairs. The skin tint. I don't have it on me right now to show you. You know the one. I just don't know which color I'm going to be. There's light or light medium. I mean probably light medium. I think I'll just go in with light medium. We have fake tan on after all. The packaging's cute. It's this like Baby pink packaging, blurs, pores, mattifies, conceals, blemishes, even skin tone with light coverage. Um, and it says to apply it using your fingers. We're not going to do that. Oh, is this too dark? We'll see how the coverage is. If it's quite sheer, I think we'll be fine. And then I can like conceal and stuff and it'll even out. Where's brush? Oh, it feels like Dream Matte Mousse. Look how streaky it is. Oh no, not again. No, it's okay. It's very mattifying. Whoa, look how mattifying it is. The difference, it's crazy. We're gonna make it work, team. Just applying a sm I'm like gonna use that all over. So like, I'm applying a small amount. Um, way less than I thought I would. Straight off the bat, I feel like this product's probably not for me because it is so mattifying. If you have, you know, problem pores, um, more oily skin, this could actually probably be really good for you. But for me, I don't really mind my pores and yeah, it is actually really pretty for matte, but yeah, I just wouldn't reach for something like this typically unless I put like a very shiny base under it. I don't know if that would work. It's good when you like buff it like that, how I did, and then like tap it. It kind of just like, I don't know, evens it out even more and the color's okay now. I do need a bit more on my other cheek. So let's go ahead and apply some more. I can see why they say to use fingers. I do think you'd get a very nice finish with fingers, but I just don't like getting my fingers covered in makeup, to be honest. Doing a little swirl, and then we'll tap it in. I hope um, my concealer goes on nicely on top of this, though. Oh, God. It's very um crumbly. Like, the formula itself is, like, so dry. Definitely, it's not, like, for me. But also, I don't hate it, which is weird, but I probably wouldn't use it again. I just think it totally depends on your skin type, like I said. I feel like you could just lay that on top of a different foundation just where you needed it. Almost like if you imagine Pore Fessional Primer by Benefit, but after foundation, it's kind of like a tinted Pore Fessional almost. Like, that's actually how I would probably describe this. Cool product, just I don't really need it. I feel like it's oxidized a little bit though. Hmm. It's not like super orange, but compared to my, like this is a bit more olive. I don't know, I feel like the camera keeps changing. 
it's not too bad. I think we can fix it with some concealer. For the concealer, I wanted to try out the new Kylie one. I actually, oh, this is not a concealer. I grabbed this thing. It was, this is the lip oil I want to try. Let's pop on some lip balm. So let's try out Blueberry from Glowish. Super Jelly Lip Balm. This is how it looks. Mm, it smells delicious. It's supposed to make your lips go like a pinky tone, which I thought's like pretty for like a cool tone look, even though we're going to apply lipstick on top, but... My lips are dry. So they're kind of purpley pink right now. We'll see how they continue to change. Feels good though. Feels moisturizing. Feels lightweight, but yeah. Mm, very smooth. Here we go. Okay, so I've got three different shades here. I wasn't quite sure for my face if I would want 4.5 or 4 WN. I've gone for a more cool undertone under the eyes just to help color correct. So we've gone with 3C, which is like a paler kind of color. I have no idea where this sits in the shade range, but there is a huge shade range. Shade range. Like, I don't know which one of these is the color that I'm using. So I don't know how many more, I'm assuming there's more pale ones than three. Like, did they start at one? I'm assuming so. Packaging's cute. Little Kylie pink moment. And then, oh, this is a really tiny little doe foot applicator. I mean, that's fine. I'm just going to use my ultra soft powder sponge, powder puff, not powder sponge. I can't even function today. Ooh, that is blending. Very good. Make some on top. Yeah, that blended out flawless. Do my little trick, put some in my waterline. Someone said they've been doing that ever since I showed them years ago. I love that. <laughs> One of my favorite little makeup hacks. I think the color actually looks really nice. I think the lightness compared to, you know, the rest of my face is like perfect. It's not too bright and too light. It's just like a shade light and it's nice. Blend this out on the other side too. So I want to look at getting this mole removed because I just feel like it's gotten bigger. It's stressing me out. Um, I used to love it because it was like my little unique thing. But now I'm just worried more so because it's like a mole and it's changing. So like, do I just... Book in, I don't have a lot of moles, okay? Don't call me dumb. I am wondering, do I just book in it to the doctor and do they look at it? Like, will they cut it out? How, like, with one this size, like, is it major? Because it's close to my eye, is it major? Do I have to go to a plastic surgeon to do it? Does anyone have any insight? Like, have you got any personal experiences? Um, yeah, I'm just kind of wondering what I'm in for. I'm assuming my first step is probably just to, like, go in and, like, talk to, like, the nurses or the doctor or whatever and just like get them to have a look at it. I don't care about how it looks at all because I've always had one there um, so it's not that. It's literally just because, I don't know, I'm worried about it and I kind of just want to get rid of it so that I'm not anxious about it anymore because <laughs> I've been feeling anxious about it. I didn't even think about it for ages until someone like commented or like, I can't remember if they DM me or something and they were like really nice about it. They were like, I'm not trying to like attack your appearance but I feel like it's gotten bigger and I like... I asked Hamish, he's like, actually, now that you mention it, I think so. I could probably just go back and look at old videos and see. Like, yeah, it does not bother me, but thoughts? Any advice? Ah, oh, this is so yum. Looks feral, I know, but it's so good. And since I've been sick lately, like, the nutrients just hit different. There's, like, a lot of Huda Beauty in this video, but that's okay. Love all the, um like work Huda Beauty are doing at the moment to spread awareness around what's happening over in Gaza at the moment too. So we will support them. Actually, I do actually want to do like a full face of Huda Beauty or like the Huda Beauty brands, like Huda Beauty, Glowish, all of that, if you guys are interested. So I want to try the new Easy Bake and Snatch. And I don't really know what color because, you know, the trend at the moment is the pink, but I've done that a couple of times in my last few videos. So I was thinking of doing maybe cupcake. So there's pound cake, which is like the beige. And then cupcake, I think, is kind of in the middle of pink and beige. <laughs> I don't know. Let's just see, shall we? So in here, you do get a little puff, but we'll use a different one. Looks like this. So it's just like the pressed version of the loose powder, except it's more brightening than the loose powder. So the loose one's still great to bake and set. This one's really good to brighten it. And I think a lot of people actually use like both at once. However, I don't think I will today because this foundation stuff's quite like, I don't know, it like sets itself. And I've noticed that the Kylie concealer on top of it is kind of like set. It's not like wet whatsoever. It's slightly going into like natural fine lines I have under here. The ones that you can't get rid of because it's literally just your eye shape. Not terribly. Um, but I think I can just get away with using this. Hopefully. Hmm? 
I don't know, I don't want to take too much because I made that mistake in my She Glam video <laughs> recently. I just tapped into it like four times. Who am I kidding? Okay, I'm gonna do the ugly face to stretch my eye down. So I can get right up in there. You know, I'm sure you know, but if you are sitting under your eyes, make the area flat. Like, smooth out any lines first, make the area flat and then set. Um, rather than just like, you know, scrunching up your face, otherwise you're going to emphasize the lines. That is so brightening. Ooh, it's almost too much. Honestly, these powders are no joke. So these remind me a lot of the KKW Beauty, back in the day, KKW Beauty brightening powders that I would rave about and I still use to this day. Case in point, these ones right here. Um, love these. They're basically these. So, you know, if you loved these like I did, and there you go. It's essentially the same dang thing. And I am happy about that because, yeah, I was always freaking out <laughs> when I'd use my KKW one. I was like, what am I gonna do once this is gone one day? You know, set your under eyes normal for a normal day and then use something like this with like a tiny brush or the puff if you want like a dramatic look like this. But if you just want like a little bit of brightening, I like to take like a small face brush like this, go like this and then just kind of like dust a little bit and it just brightens up your concealer, makes you look well rested, all of that type of vibe. It's good, you know? I feel like I've got way too much on at this point. Like, you do not need much. Take it from me. I've made a big mistake today. So, I mean, I don't know if I have any new pressed powders. I think we're just gonna have to go in with a pressed powder at this point to like blend that because if I just leave it like this, I mean, is it gonna look okay once I bronze? I don't know. Maybe we can just see how it goes. And I've got setting spray. Hold on, let's put some of this. Do I need any? Yeah, just a little bit around my nose and things. Let's just go in with 4WN, which is one shade darker, and it's the warm neutral undertone, because there's like different undertones, duh. Just a little bit around my nose. I've got a little bit of redness I can see. I've got the scar. <laughs> the vlog's up, by the way, if you want to know what I did. I've got a few vlogs coming too. Oh yeah, that color's like, look, it's pretty dang. Spot on. So I'm just going to use some of that where I've got redness too. And I think this color is good so I'll probably donate the darker one because I don't think I'm going to need it. And then I'm just going to take this angled brush and stipple it out. And we can watch how it blends. I love like, I don't know if you guys have noticed but in my videos lately like I've been fast forwarding and leaving in some of the blending bits. Because I just find it so satisfying to watch. And like I said, that um, Perfecta 4-in-1 product we used kind of self-set. Um, and this blends really nicely on top of it still, which is good news. Alright, I'm going to blend it kind of in the edge of this powder. It might go a little bit cakey. And if it does, it's just because of the order I've done the products, I reckon. I don't think it's the product's fault. <laughs> okay, the next step is going to be another like big risk because... Too much product, Shannon. I knew what I was doing. I knew I was going to do it and I still did it anyway. Yeah, way too much. It's gone cakey. Less is more. It's a good product. I'm happy to say it's a good product because it works so similar to the KKW one. And like you saw the transformation. It's just I put on too much. That's my own fault. Let's use some setting spray. This is a new one from Ofra. It's the Tropical Breeze Makeup Fixer. I'm excited to smell it. Hopefully it makes me feel like... You know, the hot weather is actually here rather than it's raining outside and this is summer, apparently. Yeah. This is one of those ones that like drenches you. Kind of love that. It smells like my grandma's makeup purse. Like it doesn't smell like grandma. It's like, you know, when you think of like grandma smell, you think of like that powdery rose like <laughs> vibe. It doesn't smell like that. It smells fruity, but it smells like, for some reason, this smells like my Nana's makeup bag. I don't know why. Let's see if that helps a little bit. Often if I get like some cakey surface situations, setting spray helps so much. So fingers crossed. I was going to do my bronzer, but I'm going to have to let that kind of melt and set now. It's actually like, yeah, with the setting spray, I feel like it looks so much better. Ooh, don't make my mistake. This is the moral of the story, but very excited for that product and I will be using this so much. I can tell you that right now. And it is still similar to the She Glam one though. Like, you know, if you want one on a budget. Look, they sent me another one as a backup. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's do the brows. So I thought for my brows, we'll do something a little bit unconventional. Plus I've also like got very blonde hair right now and I don't really know what I'm doing for my brows. Like 
if I do my normal brows, is that going to be weird? I don't know. I thought I would try out the Denise Myricks groundwork because if you watch the PR haul, you know if you didn't, well, everyone is going crazy about this. Everyone, not everyone, makeup artists in particular. I've been watching a lot of TikTok like professional makeup artists go crazy for this because it's basically a whole lot of different neutral undertones. Of course, you can use this for eyeshadow and you've got all the different neutrals you need, like cooler, warmer, neutral, whatever. But also you've got the options to do eyeliner, eyebrows, contouring, bronzing, like lots of different things for different skin tones. So if you're a makeup artist, you might get a lot of use out of this. Or if you're just like little old me and you just want to buy it, then I look at this and I think eyeshadow, I think contour, I think doing, yeah, my brows. So let's do brows because I think I'm going to do a different um, palette for my eyeshadow today. That wasn't very satisfying. Sorry this video is real long, but you know, it is what it is. I think this is just where we're at with my YouTube channel these days. Half hour videos, hour long videos, whatever. <gasps> do you know what I want to do? Live streams on YouTube. I've never done that. Well, I've done one years ago, but I haven't done it lately. And I was like, oh, I'm always trying out different live streaming places, Twitch, um, TikTok, Instagram live, like all sorts. And I'm like, oh, I haven't done a YouTube one in ages. I think I'm gonna start with chiseled, this one. So what's the difference? Why is there two? Oh, one's like a creamy kind of powdery, like, I don't know, it's like creamy-ish. And I take the creamy-ish kind of formula, yeah. Look, when I press into it, it's like putty. And this one's more of like a straight up powder. Oh, that's interesting. I'll do one eyebrow and we'll see if we can see the difference because this matches like my eyebrows perfectly. So I can't really tell if it's doing anything. Wait, this is like my perfect eyebrow color. Look, that looks so natural. Like they look like identical colors, at least in real life. I don't know about camera. They look identical, except this one looks like full, thick, luxuriously bushy, delicious. Those are the wrong words to describe, but you know what I mean? So the key with this formula is kind of wipe. Wipe like this, like nice and gentle, otherwise you'll just dig in like I did and now it looks all ugly. I use a little bit of the concealer again just to like carve out my brows a little bit because I got a little bit carried away. And like this can be the base for our eyeshadow too. Now one thing I saw lots of you requesting was an empties video, so I think after this I'm going to film one. Because I've been keeping my empties, a lot of them, not... This is the problem, I've been throwing out some because like I wasn't planning on doing a proper video but I kept some empties for like a TikTok empties video because I was like oh on TikTok I can only film like a couple minutes so like I just kind of kept a few but I feel like I can rally up enough to do like a YouTube video um I just I don't have every empty but it doesn't matter. I really like this Kylie concealer to be honest. I've not gotten my brows done in like a year. Or over a year probably and it shows it really does show right for eyeshadow I'm so scared I'm excited though but I'm scared so loads of you wanted to see it you guys wanted me to do a look out of my comfort zone with colors like this so there was this palette there's the Natasha Denona palette there was a Colourpop one that was more affordable um, lots of different brands at the moment How do there we go okay packaging though That's so cool! Is that mirrored? It is. That's really cool packaging. Huge fan. Anyways, yeah, lots of brands are doing color stories like this. Colourpop too. Did I say that already? I probably did. So it's definitely obviously like a trend, right? Cool tone. The reason I chose this palette today is because compared to the, like, the Natasha Denona ones, like hard out. Like, it's really cool, but I was scared of it. This one, I can see some tones that I could wear day to day. Like, look at these six down this side. Those sets would be so pretty just for everyday looks. They're not too cool, you know, they're not too silver, too black or anything. Very wearable colours. So I just thought, out of all the palettes, this one's probably a good investment for a lot of you guys if you're looking for this kind of colour story with the silvers and stuff and blacks because it's versatile. You've got those, but you've also got, like, colours you can use day to day if you don't want to do something super grungy. Like, best of both worlds, you know? I am going to try and pick colours that I wouldn't normally gravitate towards. Like, naturally, just then I said these ones. Like, look at this colour called Stand Up. Oh! Fuck me up. That is so pretty. <laughs> oh my god, I want to use it so bad. You know what? That like, I feel like this is like satin taupe. I don't even have satin taupe anymore, but don't you reckon? It's like satin taupe, but better because it's like extra shiny and it feels so luxurious and creamy. Let's swatch it. Oh, like, are you kidding? 
kidding. I love that color and I want to use it so badly, but we won't. We're just gonna have to like commit. I have no idea where this is gonna go and I'm really scared that it's gonna turn out terribly. Okay, I think let's go brave to start. Okay, technically I would use a color like this. I really like this color. It's like a mauve cool toned, mauve neutral vibe. Um, but oh, that's so pigmented. <laughs> this is a blender brush by So Beauty. It's pigmented, okay. That's fine. I was thinking of doing like a halo eye. I don't even know. I do love a grunge look. I've done a couple of grunge looks. I did one kind of recently. I'll link it below. But it was not with these types of colours. But yeah, grunge has been like in for a bit. But yeah, these colours I'm just seeing everywhere all of a sudden. Silvery vibes. I'm going to take a little bit of beauty chaos. Now this is a different one. It's like a lilac. Let's see what it looks like. Ooh. It actually looks so much cooler on the eye than you would think. Look at that. So yeah, you can see these are like kind of purpley tones, which I am so comfortable with. They actually look so much more like purpley and like beautiful on the eye. Although I do feel a little bit like Ursula right now, but you know, you look at them in the palette and I feel like on the eye they look way more purpley. Don't know if that's just me. Don't know how I feel about the cool tones with my very, very, very blonde hair right now. <laughs> like I feel like if I could have chosen, it'd be all about that taupe colour and that would look so good. We might have to do a round two on this palette and do another look. I'm going to take this very skinny blender brush. I've got a little bit of fallout but it's not too bad so far. You know what actually, like this colour's like so grey. I want to see what it looks like on the eye. Look at that. Like it looks real pale but yeah. It's similar to that lilac one but just a bit more like grey toned. It's actually very pretty. I'm just kind of like applying that in the crease. The pigment on these is so good. It's like actually providing coverage. It's so pigmented. Back to where we were going with this. Oh, see that one would look cool too. As I'm looking at this palette more and more, I'm just seeing more colors that I really just want to like experiment with. Oh, the lighting's turning to shite. Let's go with Nirvana because this color is scaring the living crap out of me. You know, I don't usually go in with colors like this. Look at the pigment. Wow. So pretty though. This would make such a gorgeous um, like eyeliner color if you went in with a angled eyeliner brush. The inner corner too. It's a little halo. A halo eye is like my go-to for a grunge look because they never quite look perfect. What is this lighting? Um, in a good way, you know? And I've got some fallout like I said, but I'm just gonna wait until near the end to clean that up. This is when it's a good idea to use like a bit of a loose powder under the eyes, then do your eyeshadow, and then you can kind of just sweep it away. Hopefully it comes off okay. I'm nervous. Right, now we need to go back in with the other blender brush, but I don't know where I put it. Like, you know that um that meme on TikTok? It's like when I catch you, when I catch you, Ricky. <laughs> That's literally how I feel about my makeup brushes. Like, where the hell have you got? I literally, like, had you in my hand 20 seconds ago, and now you've, like, just gone. I feel like this is still not super out of my comfort zone. <gasps> the sun. The sun is coming out. But hold on. Okay, hold on. Now we need to, like, oh my god, my under eyes. Yeah, there's definitely, this might be the kind of palette you might want to use before concealer and everything. Like, it's not ideal, right? I feel like, did that setting spray leave my skin looking super glowy? Like, vibes. Yeah, like I was saying, it's not ideal. It's not ideal when an eyeshadow palette has fallout, but for me it's not like a game breaker because the sun's gone again. If I know, then I'll just do the eyeshadow first. Clean it up, do my makeup, don't care. As long as it doesn't fall out throughout the day, that's the thing that gets me. These colors are so rich and just amazing. Oh, that's like a cream. Maybe I can use that because I don't think I had a black eyeliner I was going to use, so maybe I'll use that. I'm getting sidetracked. I'm so sorry. What is wrong with my brain? I'm going to swatch some of the shades. So half, half, half hazard. Is that how you say that? Whoa, it's like purple and black duochrome. Let's do Rebel. It's like a silver, straight up silver. Maverick, which is the one I'm eyeing up because it just looks stunning. Ooh. Similar to the other one, but slightly less cool toned. And then Strong AF, which is like a charcoal-y, purpley vibe. And then Avant Garde, kind of a similar tone to that one, except more charcoal, less purpley. They are all different, similar, but different. Now, where do I wipe my hand? I'm gonna be extra, we're gonna start with Maverick. I feel like it is not picking up on a brush. This might be a finger color, but we're gonna persevere. I'm just gonna keep building it up. All right, we got some. Silver, 
Now we are gonna use some black. I told you I would. But first, oh yeah, fallout. But like I said, I think this is a finger color. Pretty, woo. I'm stuck in mum mode. Like that's how I talk to Porter. Pretty, wow. I'm gonna use my finger, stuff it. I was trying to be precise. That's why I was using a brush. It literally looks like tin, like tin foil on my eyes. And massaging it on like this just like presses every pigment down and it makes it look like liquid metal, like a liquid eyeshadow almost, rather than a powder. Same brush, maybe strong AF. Just try to mix them together. And going on either side of the silver. That looks so good. I don't even know if you're gonna be able to see. It just blends all the colors together. Once I've placed it, I'm just gonna press it to get rid of the flaky bits. Obsessed. I don't even want to use black because I'm so scared I'm gonna ruin this, but I will. I feel like if I had gone in with like this color from the start or this one rather than the lilac y kind of undertone ones, it would have turned out way more black and silver vibes. But because we've used that purple, it's not a bad thing, but it came out more purple and I feel like it's so much more wearable than I was anticipating, which is a good thing, but once again, like I didn't mean to. <laughs> it's kind of like a look I would do anyway. But yeah, look at the fallout. It's crazy. I'm gonna take my sheer powder brush. It's like very sheer. I'm gonna. Oh, this is not gonna go good. It's left like silver stripes under my eyes, but I actually just don't know how we're gonna fix this at this point because the more I try to fix it, the worse it's getting. So maybe we just pretend that it's not there. Like, I can't see it. Can you guys see it? So I think before I put on any black, what we'll do is we will use that cream color. So I want a angled eyeliner, well, winged eyeliner brush technically it's called. This is EXO Beauty. We're gonna go in with grunge and I'm gonna do what I did with the eyebrow product. So you kind of swipe on both sides. I've never used, I don't think, a cream from Huda Beauty before. In a palette I mean. She always does like all these different textures but I kind of usually just stick to the powders. It's very pigmented, look. I'm pressing this into the lash line and I think I'm gonna kind of just go on the inner and outer. Like I don't think I'm gonna go all the way across. I might just extend the inner corner slightly like this. I'm gonna take Renegade, which is a black eyeshadow. I'm gonna use the same brush. Tap on top of it. Let's go in with a pencil brush and the black. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. I've done this like swoopy shape on the outer corners. Don't ask me why, it's just what happened. One is way more out than the other. Huda Beauty Creamy Coal Eyeliner. This is black, very Vanta, extreme black, extreme. Just like a creamy eyeliner vibe. Let's see. So let's go in with Love Anarchy again. Thick in a gray taupe. I'm thinking this will be a nice subtle kind of, you know, just shadow, just to like give something without like taking over. The more I look at this palette, the more I fall in love. I just wish it wasn't so fallouty, but like I said, that's fine. Next time we apply this before foundation, repeat after me. <laughs> Let's do a little bit more of this while I do my mascara and lashes, and then we'll do bronzer. But I don't know, I'm obsessed with this. I don't know, the smell is like a big warm hug for me. It smells like my Nana. Does it smell like a soap she used or something? I don't know. It's making me like emotional. Unexpected. Oh, what the heck? Let's try this. This is the Falsy Surreal by Maybelline. My name is Maybelline. Brush check. Do you know what I like too is how the packaging is oval like this. It's got flat sides so you can put it down and it doesn't roll off your table. I should have curled my lashes. They look so much better when I curl them. It's just one of those mascaras right now that's like I know that's illegal, but instantly better. Second coat, I think maybe the more I use this one, it'll get better. I think there just wasn't much product on the brush itself because now we're getting a lot of separation. It's very separating, lengthening. It's very dark. I feel like it's making my lashes thick. Like It's gonna be hard for you to see since um, I've got such dramatic eyeshadow on, but can you see the before and after? 
So I think what I'll do sometime soon is a get ready with me, just a chill get ready with me for the day. Let's retry the pretty grunge with that cool taupe colour I love. Um, and we'll do that before the rest of the makeup next time. And I also want to try the foundation again that we talked about with some like different setting powder and set it real good. Because yeah, there's just a few things that I've tried recently that I want to try again in a different way. Let me know if there's anything else you want to see in that video. But anyways, there's the bottom lashes. I can see such a difference in real life. I actually think this mascara is pretty good. Once I, you know, got some product on the brush that is, I will 100% be using this some more. I seem to really like Maybelline mascaras most, like, often. I feel like the Huda Beauty um, eyeliner in my waterline, not overly phased on it. I'm dropping stuff. Not overly phased on it. I feel like it's kind of gone patchy on my waterline. It hasn't really stuck properly. Go over it again. Tell me why I'm trying to fix my under eyes, it's literally making it worse. So I feel like I have to use this now because it's the blush that goes, the stupid lighting, blush that goes with the palette and I called it a highlighter in my PR haul and someone said it's a blush and I was like, oh my god, if I actually used my eyes, it says blush gloss. So I was like, thank you for letting me know it's a blush. So it's like one of those pH ones um, and yeah, it's a blush gloss. I want to use it and I'm terrified it's not going to go well on top of all the products I've got on. But I want to use it. Maybe we should do bronzer first though. Naturally. I said I'm going to do like the full face of Mitchell in a different video. But let's try this today anyway because I can't wait. All of the bronzer colours. I don't even know which one to use. It's gotten to the point where I think we just need some lights on. Now you may be wondering like what will I do with the really dark bronzers? Eyeshadow, duh. I'm going to start with Ginger Biscuit. It's like a lightish kind of bronzer. It's a little bit warm. This is blending really nicely. Is this too orangey? Normally I'd love it, because I love warm, but just with the eye makeup. Maybe I'll go in with Mushroom Bloom, which is like a cool tone kind of bronzer. It's not a contour. Yeah, that's better. It's not contour, but it's just, yeah, not as warm. And a little bit of some shade. This top one I've used. This one, this one, and this one. Just because I want a bit more dark bronzer. This color is so good. It's not the kind of color I'd normally gravitate for, but I think it's pretty. I feel like my eyebrows look so much better in real life than in camera. How should I use this? Like sponge? Port is still my sponge and I don't know where it is. I've got like a dirty dry one. Maybe I'll just use like a powder puff. Let's just see what happens. I can't even see it, so I need a mirror. <gasps> oh, I can see that hard out. How bizarre. Do, 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 do. How bizarre. How bizarre. It's just a pretty pink colour. I suppose it's one of those ones that technically changes to your um, skin tone. But I always wonder, is it just like a standard colour that they change to? Or is it really different for every person? I think that made my makeup look ten times better. Like it made my skin look healthy. I think this would look stunning on like a no makeup or a very sheer makeup day. Like just an everyday makeup look. I'm a huge 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 fan of that. Straight up and it applied nicely even over that crappy <laughs> like cakiness that I did to myself. I am going to use a different lipstick but out of curiosity I'm just going to take some on my finger and apply it to my lips because I feel like it looks so pretty. It's so pretty on the lips too. Oh, I forgot to do my lashes. Got sent some new ones from Tarte. How pretty these ones are. I thought we'd do these today. So these are called Center of Attention. Here is the before and after. These lashes, I didn't notice at first, but they've got little flecks of brown through them too. They're very pretty. I found them a little bit hard to like put on. They kept popping off, but we got there in the end. I just had to sit there like... You know, and you have to sit there holding them on like this for ages with the glue. I also added some MAC, what is it called, black track to my tight line and my waterline. Because, yeah, the Huda Beauty one just doesn't like sit on my waterline nicely. I have a highlighter, this one by What's Up Beauty. The eyeshadow palettes are unreal. Like, they're so pretty. Why does no one talk about them? Highlighter Duo Palette Safari Sunset. Look at this. What? You're not going to ruin the pattern after just using it a couple of times. Like, you'll have to use this a whole lot to actually make a dent. Oh, it's really shiny. I don't even know if I need setting spray because is my face going to go too shiny if I do? Um, I just realized that the highlighter will be sticking to the blush balm I used because it's like a base almost. There's a black lip joke. I just don't think. Should I just do it for the lols? Okay. <laughs> so we've got a lip pencil in. I would usually just use an eyeliner, honestly, like a really 
um, kind of stiff formula eyeliner. Not a very creamy eyeliner, you know? Quite a dry eyeliner on the lips. Rather than buying a black lip pencil, I don't think it's necessary. However, I'm curious now to see if it like is better. I'm sure it probably is better, but is it worth spending money on, you know, for a black? Unless you use black all the time, probably not worth it. Freaking get this out. Do you know how much this is winding me up? Ugh. <laughs> okay. So it's like the same kind of packaging as, you know, the lip pencils. You get a sharpener on one end. It's a windy kind of thing. Oh, this is weird. I haven't worn black um, lips since probably like, I don't know, years ago when I used to do my colourful lip series. Oh god. It's gonna be so hard to like get the shape because it's so bold, you know, but you could just use um, some concealer to like make it perfect. But what I'm thinking is I'll go in with the black now, fill it in so we can kind of get a good idea of how, well, of how it's looking and then we can like go back in with the lip pencil and fine tune it. Get the Silk Balm, which I've, I think I've tried one of these, but you know, I haven't delved into them a whole lot yet. And the Liquid Matte, I love the Liquid Matte formula and this is just a black, it's called X Life. Black. It smells so good. I'm gonna stop there, let that dry, and then we'll go back in with the lip pencil and perfect it. Okay, you can't tell me that this is my comfort zone now. And I'm doing this with the blonde hair. Apparently. I feel like, um, Bride of Chucky. <laughs> That's feeling dry, so I'm gonna go back in with the pencil. I feel like it's slightly patchy, the black liquid lipstick. So maybe I should have gone all over with the lip liner. I'll just fill in now. Look, at the end of the day, if you want a black lip and you want to see I pressed my lips together and it went patchy I think I need to like put some I'll put the liquid on and it won't press them together and we'll see if it works If you want a black lipstick and you want it to be comfortable This is going to be comfortable I just have to figure out how to apply it well I think that's the trick just don't press your lips together It looks really good now Oh it's actually like got a black kind of tint to it Swatch it. Yeah, it's got a little black tint. Lip gloss. I don't really know what the deal is with these. Cryo plumping lip balm. There you go. It's a plumping lip balm apparently. The eye makeup with just like a nice like fresh pink lip would look so pretty and wearable. <laughs> this <laughs> literally Halloween. Like Bride of Chucky, Ursula, Villain, Witch. Should have done this before Halloween. Would have been handy. So this will make it shiny. Gently pressing my lips together now. Not like rubbing them. Feels plumping I think. Mm. So that is the finished look. I am going to change my lip for my empties video, but um Yeah, maybe I'll just quickly show you that shall I I used amber lip pencil and lace liquid lipstick by exo beauty today Very pretty and I wanted to touch up my lip pencil after I put on the liquid lip lo and behold I can't find the lip pencil. I just use this is what I mean like where do they go? I bet I'll find it as soon as I stop filming. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in my next video Bye bye. <laughs>